five or eight years, we're at a business called Prairie Women Adventures and Retreat, mm -hmm. and women would come to the ranch and pay me to do my ranch work, which was calving in the spring and branding, mm -hmm. also in the spring at that time, and weaning in the fall. That program was set up with three goals in mind. One of them was education, because it only took about 30 seconds on a nightly news, and even today, for a commentator to say, well, today the New England Journal of Medicine said that red meat does thus, and my business was being attacked. So I wanted people to come to the ranch and see what we did here and how we treated animals and find out what I would call at least one truth. So it was about education. It was also about the environment. At that point, there was no national park or national preserve at Strong City and everyone in Kansas pretty much knows that the state is like 98% privately owned, and so people love to come to the Flint Hills, but there was no place to come to. And so that gave them an opportunity, I felt like, to get out in the Flint Hills, but to also get a rancher's perspective on why it was important that, first, number one, I'm doing my best to protect it. Number two, I'm glad you're here, but I don't want to, I don't think we're destroying it, and I think that I'd like for you to come share in it and see why I love it and see what work I'm trying to do. The third one was empowerment. You know, uh, in the 80s, I was in, uh, empowered by the work I was able to do, and I wanted other people to have that sense. And, and I even had one of our staff say to me one time, you know, Jane, I had a pray woman moment last night. And I said, really, what happened? And she said, I had a flat tire. And I thought... Well, somebody's going to come along pretty soon. And then I thought, no, I can fix this. And I just got the book out and changed my tire. I saw it both with men and women. I learned it's not so much a women's experience as being able to do something you haven't ever done before. So at one point we had media people out, and we were really tired of the cameraman taking pictures. And so we said, put the camera down and come help us. And the first time he caught a calf in the head gate on the shoot. He had the same look. I always called it the prairie woman look, but he had that same look of success and empowerment that I'd seen so many people have. So the prairie women program was real significant in how I ranched because they ask good questions. When they, uh, one, one of the ones that really set me back were the women who came out who were microbiologists and said to me, so how is silage made? And my response that I, in my head was, well, you take corn and you chop it all up and you smash it down in the silo with the biggest tractor you've got and let it sit. But their follow-up question was, when does caramelization occur? And I was like, oh my gosh. I said, I have no idea, but I'll bet I can find out. So I did a little research and could come back and give them an answer, and I learned a lot about silage in the process. Um, they also asked if we were going to be using a black leg vaccine, and I'm like, well, how do you know anything about black leg? Well, one of them had done some of her undergraduate study in black leg. So, and if they asked me, well, why do you feed what you feed, or why do you calve when you calve, it was never going to be a good enough answer to say, well, that's what my dad did. So there was a big cycle broken by having a businessman father and being a girl in how I ranched. And those questions kept me on my toes. And Prairie women had two things in common. They loved the out of doors and they loved an adventure. From that point, forget it. They came from every socioeconomic background. They came from every educational background. They came from all different kinds of um, jobs, you know, just everything. Uh, they came from urban areas. They came from rural areas. If they were here, they cared about it and they would ask the questions. And I had women come who would then bring their mothers or bring their sister. Um, I, and we, I still have a group of women today who come back just as friends. They came so many times. They were here for calving. They were here for branding. They were here for weaning. They stayed in touch. And they still come back and help just because they want to. I, I would have denied this for many years, but, the, but I realized I loved having people come visit and teaching them about what was going on.